Well, here it is, folks. This is our first perimeter fence. Uh, this is my property line. And this road is one of the roads that the developers put in. There's a 10 acre chunk here on the east side of it, uh, the east end. And we surround this 10 acres on three sides. So we just got through driving all the posts. Um, we got into some issues. These are nine footers. And uh, instead of trying to auger every single one of them in and then tamping them, we hired a guy with a post pounder to drive them. And it worked pretty good down in the draws, but we got up here on these ridges. And I'm telling you, it would not drive them. It went down about two and a half feet and a 750 pound weight hit these posts and just bounced. Absolutely bounced. I'll show you this gate here in a minute. I wanna show you. We got them in. I had a brainstorm. I went home very, very depressed last night. I'm like, how in the world is gonna get in 90 of these without tamping every single one of them? You know, we're talking four and a half, four and a half foot in the ground. And so I got a brainstorm last night. I'll turn around and get the wind out of the camera. Um, I remembered that I had bought an auger bit for the skid steer that was six inches, six inch diameter. And I don't know if any of y'all seen these augers that go on these skid steers, but they're built super, super strong. They're not like a tractor digger. And if you hit a root with an auger on a skid steer, you can just reverse it and back it out of the ground. If you hit a root with a PTO driven tractor digger and it stops, it locks up, you are done. I've done it twice. It took me all day long to dig a human sized grave around that auger to cut the root out to release my digger from the tractor. It wouldn't start and you couldn't, you couldn't get it out. So I will never dig another hole with a tractor digger. But uh, back to the heater. So we went this morning, we got over here and we, I got in front of uh, Justin with his post driver and I started augering these and uh, Joel and Ike and I were keeping them level, the holes. And this hole went down um, basically about four foot two to four foot five about four and a half feet on most of these and then so that hole was six inches six inch diameter and that post he put that big driver on there man let me he started slapping those things in and we got i think around 35 and we were done by 1 32 o'clock so in about five hours four hours four hours uh, we knocked out around 30 to 35 posts. Folks, there's no way you can hand tamp them. Not that many, and you would have been wore out. I know I can, Isaac and Joel were not looking forward to tamping. Well, we had 70 some posts left after yesterday. So that seven, that six inch auger bit, we went as deep as we could get, clear down to the gearbox. And folks, when we got down at 36 inches, that ground was powder, powder dry. It wouldn't, we couldn't get it out of the hole. It just kept filling back in the bottom foot. And so I came up with a deal here the other day. I'm like, what if we put half a gallon of water in there? So we poured a half a gallon of water in the bottom of the hole. I put my auger bit down in there and I turned it like this, just kept making like a mud patty. And then every single crumb of that dried dirt stuck to my auger bit and I was like, Zoop! and that's why this clay is kind of wet looking. That, and we got another rain. We got another rain last night. So we got an inch and a quarter on Wednesday night and today's Thursday, February 14th. We got a another, our rain gauge said a half an inch, but Percy Creek was bank full. So today's the 14th. Yesterday was the 13th. Um, but it's wet out here and I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. We've got our spring flush made. Look at this, folks. This is all the farm in that direction. I'm looking straight west and this is the north line over here and there's no houses on it. 
This is going to be holding 13 houses in here. Nope. Nope. Jan and I bought it, and uh, developers can go fish. They can go pound sand. I got tickled. Some guy said, well, great, you can sell off a quarter acre lots on the front of your farm. And then you can have the back of the farm to run livestock. That's a win-win. I'm like, that may be a win-win for you, but that'd be a lose-lose for me. I don't want a whole row of houses on the front of my farm. Are you kidding me? Yuck. Absolutely yuck. House dogs and, you know, if your cows get up close to the fence, they're going to be screaming, I smell my nerve. Oh, your cows bawled last night. It's like, I don't want to roll houses along the front of my farm. Keep the houses in the suburbs. You don't need them 30 miles from a major town. That's that's not what we need. This is the land to produce food. Let's get back to the gate. <laughs> I get carried away on that. I can't help it. I can't help it. I can't stand to see farmland being gobbled up by developers that don't have any, any, any feelings for the land. None. All they're after is a buck. I don't have a problem with a guy making a buck. I really don't. But don't be coming out here taking up all of our farmland and turning it into houses. Build all them houses close to town. There's still lots of land close to town. Build it there. Build it there. I mean, we're looking at a conservation easement. This will never be developed if we put it into conservation. It's illegal. You can't do it. Wow, look at that. That far ridge, way, way, way over there is a bull farm. Way over there. That's the bull farm. That's Doug and Joanna's. Hooks right on ours. Yep. Anyway, the gate. So we put in H braces. This is our corner right here. Both posts are in the ground, four and a half feet. And these are the H braces. I love this new design. Um, you can buy these braces and uh, there's several different, well, there's probably several different places, but uh, I went online and just uh, typed in H brace horizontal supports. That's what those are. And, uh, then we did this we drove a pin that's a 12 inch pin all the way through to here okay that's a quarter inch pin folks that horizontal beam is not coming out it's just not and then we drilled our bolts in you got the bolt on the bottom this direction just facing up this one is facing down that keeps the gate from being lifted off of the hinges if a cow would come up there and get her head and try and push up, she couldn't do it. Uh, I've got latches ordered. We don't have them in yet. The latches are going to go right here. And so they'll literally click in. And it'll have a, a place right here, a hasp. You can put a padlock. Uh, that chain's just temporary. I kind of like having a bump here. Uh, that bump, of course, if I put the latch here, that'll probably go bye-bye. But until I get my latch, I don't like an eight, uh, that's a 16 footer. I don't like them hanging from the hinges and not having support out here on the end. So that's why that's there. So for the H braces, whatever direction you're pulling. So the, the fence is going that way. It's going south. So you always put your brace wire. This is high tensile. You go around the bottom, you put a staple down there. Okay. You come up here, you put your tensioner on. The wire circles all the way up around, put the staple here. And then you hold this together and all that is, is um, 12 gauge galvanized wire. That keeps these together all the way down so that you put your high tensile wire on there and your insole tubing is not touching so you won't get a spark. Um, this, this particular brand here is a Zariba. Zariba. They're all right. I like the daisy tensioners just about as well, and they're cheaper. Uh, yeah. We've already got another one of these put up at the other end of the farm. Then we've got up on F, the big gates, those great big iron deals. 
those are 18 foot openings so we've got two 18 foot gates up there so it's getting there it's getting there it needs to be getting there because look what's coming <laughs> we've got grass it's coming hard now that we got the rain and right now it's around 70 degrees out here so they're saying down in the 40s for a high in this coming week that'll slow it up a little bit but uh yeah, I'd say by the time we get this fence, the perimeter done, uh, we're going to be ready to turn some animals in here. I'd say the grass is going to be hitting that eight to nine inch mark. Um, yeah. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Anybody that's interested in building some really good high quality fence, high tinsel folks, stay tuned. High tinsel, that's what we're going to be putting up here. And uh, we'll go through some learning exercises how to teach you how to put up high tensile fence. It's that time of the year. Check out the description section of this video. Get 10% off on your first purchase from PowerFlex Fence. There is a discount code there. You've got to use that code or you're not going to get your discount. And that's on fencers, everything. You know, you can, you can get a little money invested when you're setting up a whole farm. So make it count. Put your list together and... Get that 10%, man. Isn't that a beautiful view? Folks, I drove for, by this farm from the time, oh my gosh, from the time I was seven years old. My dad and I used to come down that highway every day. I'm sorry, every Saturday, going out to our farm to build fence. And dad did not build fence like this. <laughs> he built fence with barb. A, a roll of old rusty barbed wire and baling wire and then he never brought a post he just brought an axe and he chopped down a tree over there and that'd be his post and the next time we came back the post had rotted off and we had to do it again and i always told myself if i'm going to build a fence it's going to be one that's going to be there i'm not going to be out here monkeying with it good fence make good neighbors good fence keeps your animals safe Folks, don't compromise on your perimeter, okay? So if your animals get out, you're going to have a wreck, literally. You could. If they get out on that road and somebody hits one, uh, guess what? You're liable. Unless you live in an open-range state like uh, Nebraska. I think Wyoming might be open-range, open but you're not going to find an open-range state in the Midwest or the East Coast. So... Keep them home, keep them safe, and build a good fence. Stay tuned. You're going to learn how to do that here on Green Pastures Farm, the Regenerative Rancher YouTube site. Y'all have a good one, and uh, we'll see you next time.